the product, the process, the people, ethos decorum. My name is Erin Fastel and I am an artist who draws. I always drew, like as a kid I was always in my room doodling or coming up with some ridiculous story and then illustrating it. Uh, so drawing has always been a pastime for me. Uh, when I was in high school, I started taking uh, more serious art classes. And then as you approach, you know, that college application season, uh, you got to figure out what you want to do in theory for the rest of your life. So I decided that, you know, this was a thing I really was interested in pursuing. Um, so then I went to MICA, uh, the Maryland Institute College of Art. Um, my primary reason for going to MICA was I was really interested in doing children's book illustration because um, that was the thing I was doing when I was a kid as I was coming up with stories and then I was figuring out how to like illustrate them. But when I got to MICA and I started taking the illustration classes, I realized that I didn't have either a strong enough style or any style or uh, strong enough skills in drawing. And so my sophomore year, I decided that I wanted to just pursue drawing. Um, and I had started to use charcoal a lot because it was the medium of choice in learning to draw in like life drawing classes and like drawing 101. And I really enjoyed the versatility of the medium. So my sophomore year, I changed my major from illustration to drawing. And then for two and a half years, I literally just drew with charcoal. Uh, so that by the time I graduated, I really wanted to have this skill where I knew how to draw um, and I knew how to draw really well with this medium. Okay. So this piece is a, a place on uh, Wolf Street. It used to be the Eastern Pumping Station. Um, it's two of the maybe four or five buildings that are on the property. Um, and it currently has been just sitting vacant with all kinds of uh, dereliction happening, but it's about to be a food hub, um, which I think is going to be something exciting for the area. But I just loved these particular buildings with the train tracks as they went behind and all of these poles coming up. Um, uh, this piece um, is actually right around the corner. Uh, it's right by the uh, Baltimore Zoo and the uh, Druid Park uh, disc golf place. Um, but this used to be the reptile house. Uh, and I remember going here as a kid to see the snakes and everything. Um, so it was weird to come across it and be like, I know this building, but... Um, and then this piece is a shot of uh, one portion of the Latrobe homes. Um, this is often on my route when I go downtown because I live on the east side of Baltimore. So I go down uh, Harford Road, which turns into Asquith, and then you will ride right past this. Um, but this is, uh, to me, was just a beautiful shot because this tree has to be like incredibly old. So it's just this giant, beautiful oak tree that's sort of looking over the yard of, you know, Latrobe homes. And then there's this very old church just poking up in the, in the distance behind it. Um, so it's just a sight that I see often and just one that I really enjoy all of the things that are happening there. Um, and then this piece, um, I actually got on a boat to get this view. I got to go on a tugboat um, around the harbor. And these are two of the massive cargo cranes that are part of the port. Um, so this right here is actually a boat that has all of those um, like shipping containers, which I don't know how big they are, but they're definitely at least like maybe eight feet tall um, and even longer. So just to give some perspective on the size of the cargo cranes, um, that's one of the boats that is getting like unloaded here. Um, but you know, Baltimore is a port city, so it's hard to think of Baltimore and not think of these giant uh, cargo cranes that line you know, our entire certain part of the harbor. Um, they're just like these giant, monstrous beans to me. I ran out of wall space, so I couldn't put this up, but um, this is, uh, I think this is eight feet or eight and a half feet. Um, this is the only interior shot of a building that I did. 
And this is uh, the inside of the Valve House in Clifton Park. Uh, it's right on St. Lowe Drive. Um, it's a beautiful building that has this, uh, I think it's octagonal, um, and it has this amazing structure on the inside, like this huge, what looks like a very complicated steel frame that holds up this like really beautiful peaked roof. And then the roof is tiled with terracotta tiles um, and they are falling off. So there's a lot of places where it's just an empty you know, space and you can see right out to the sky. Um, it's not as empty as I have it. I sort of was really interested in having the drawing be unfinished so you could kind of see it sort of coming into being instead of just being like a finished piece. Um, but there was something really kind of like magical about how all of the missing sort of tiles just sort of were like these, I don't know, just this amazing kind of starry-ish sky thing happening where you just sort of had like these little pokes of sky coming through. You normally draw buildings and landmarks as your, and you use them as your subject matter. Uh, what's your inspiration behind using buildings and landmarks as your subject matter? So this series came about um, as a way to commemorate the life of my father. He passed away in 2014 and he was an architect. Uh, so as I was going through the process of grieving, I was trying to think of, you know, what art could I make that would help me through, you know, this process. And, you know, I could think of nothing better than, you know, drawing buildings. Because uh, throughout my entire life, you know, we will always be exploring and he would always be pointing something out or we would literally drive out of our way to see a certain building um, so as a way to sort of commemorate and remember him and also sort of have relief from that heartbreak i just started to draw buildings um, it started with me just sort of wandering around i'm from baltimore i've lived here my whole life but i don't really know the lay of the city like all of it and so i explored and I went out on foot or I would go on bike or I'd go in my car and I would just wander around and I would just see what I found. Um, and as I was wandering around, I had my camera with me on my phone um, and I would just you know, come across something that really spoke to me and I would just take out my phone and take a picture or take 50 pictures, take you know, a variety of things from different angles, um, you know, from different compositions and you know, I, I would sort of take these images and then go back to my computer and I would look at them and see which one felt like the strongest composition, like which thing captured that building really well. And from there I would just sort of manipulate it and play around in Photoshop and try to change like the tonal values. I would make it black and white, um, you know, because I'm capturing a building and I'm like trying to you know relay what that building looks like on paper but I'm also trying to give it something a little extra like I'm trying to you know these drawings are a way for me to sort of like relieve you know this heartbreak that I had so I think I was putting maybe a little bit of my sadness in each piece so I was trying to really push and pull the light and the dark of each you know composition and the tonal values to really sort of capture some other essence to the space or to that building. Um, and so, you know, once I really felt good about an image that I had, you know, I would take that and I would go um, and sort of determine a size. Because a lot of times when you're coming up to a building, you know, the size of the building and the size of the space is really what sort of captures you. Um, so I really liked the aspect of, you know, the drawings being on the larger side so that, you know, as you came up to them personally, you really felt like you were, you know, approaching something. Um, so as I was working through the series, I would go like larger and larger and larger, or I would go smaller and smaller, depending on like how I wanted you to feel as you were interacting with that building or space. Um, but so as I was working through the series, you know, I've done it for about two years now, um, I feel like it was really successful for me because I, you know, I learned a lot about Baltimore. I learned a lot about, you know, what really is the landscape of our city. 
But also I think I really did uh, work through a little bit of my grief and I really feel like the series was successful because it did what I needed it to do and I also learned a lot about you know the city that's my home. What's next for you as far as your work? I think the thing that would be really good for me right now is to do a little bit of traveling. Uh, since I've started to cast my eye on architecture, I think it would be really, really wonderful to seek out other cities or maybe even other countries to see what kind of architecture they have going on. Um, if not like in the city itself, um, you know, some places have really old architecture, like things that date back to, you know, the BC era and I've never seen anything like that like in my life and so I think it would be a really important experience to go and to just see, to walk around, um, just different parts of the world, different cities.